WannaCry so far has affected more than 300,000 computers in more than 150 countries. In this video, I will show you some of the steps you can take to protect yourself from WannaCry that may prevent other variants of ransomware too. Even though WannaCry is primarily attacking older versions of Windows, other operating systems like macOS, Linux, and newer versions of Windows are not immune from other types of ransomware attacks, so some of these steps may be useful for you as well. Later in this video, I'll provide resources to help remove WannaCry and other ransomware from your computer. That's coming up next on Tech Gumbo. WannaCry, also known as WannaCrypt, for the last week and a half have kept people locked out of their computers unless they pay a ransom of $300 in Bitcoins, which doubles after three days of the initial attack, so the victim can receive a decryption key to avoid the risk of losing all of their important files. WannaCry behaves like a worm, which could infect servers and other computers running on the same network. So far, dozens of hospitals, universities, banks, small and large companies, including FedEx, and individuals have been attacked. WannaCry seems to target a system flaw in older versions of the Windows operating systems. Those versions are primarily Windows XP, Windows 8, and Windows Server 2003. The more recent versions of Windows listed on the screen that have stayed up to date on system updates don't seem to be vulnerable to the current version of WannaCry. If you're using one of these newer versions of Windows, you can be just as vulnerable to an attack as the older versions of Windows if you are not caught up with the latest updates from Windows. According to researchers at Heimdall Security, just because there's a patch doesn't mean you'll always be protected. Newer variations of the ransomware have been popping up lately. These newer versions of Windows received a security fix back in March. Microsoft is doing something it rarely does, it has issued patches to older versions of Windows it no longer supports. I'll put links to those patches in the description. Make sure you have Windows updates turned on regardless of which version of Windows you are running. Some turned off automatic updates of Windows 10 because it would sometimes auto-install updates which tended to interfere with work or other projects. Microsoft fixed that issue with the recent creator's update for Windows 10. If you disabled automatic updates, go to your control panel and turn them back on. Just because you have antivirus and malware protection does not mean you're immune to ransomware attacks. Many of the software companies did not add ransomware blocking until recently. You may need to do some research on your own to find out if the security suite you use offers any kind of ransomware blocking. Bitdefender has an anti-ransomware tool available on their website that is completely free for download and use. Malwarebytes also has an anti-ransomware product currently in beta the most direct download I could find on their site is in their forum's beta testing page. The most common way to get ransomware is by clicking on a bad link. So don't click on suspicious links in your email or on a questionable link or ad on a web page. Just clicking on one bad link can make you a victim. Here are some additional steps. Make sure Adobe Flash is turned off in your browser. Google Chrome is one such browser that now turns off Flash by default. Also turn off Microsoft Office macros, which can sometimes pose a security risk. I'll link to the Office support page for more information on macros. If you haven't done so already, it may be a good time to invest in a reliable cloud backup service. One such service is a cloud backup tool like Carbonite to be able to access earlier versions of your files before they are encrypted. Cloud storage service Dropbox keeps snapshots of all the changes made to files over the last 30 days. If you use a cloud storage backup service, you may want to see if they provide rollback versions of your files. Another option for backing up is to use an external hard drive. Do a backup onto the external drive as often as you can. WannaCry encrypts everything it can, including USB sticks and external storage devices. So keep the drive detached when not backing up. If you're currently not using an external hard drive, I'll provide links of a few good ones. These backup options would be better than paying the ransom to get your files back. If you have non-corrupted copies of your data backed up, all you may need to do to restore your computer back to normal is to reset your PC, reinstall your software, and restore your data from a backup. Let's say you've been infected with WannaCry or WannaCrypt. If you pay the ransom, there is no guarantee the hijackers will send you the key to unlock your computer. Even if your computer is unlocked, 
the malware will still remain on infected computers. There's a tool that came out last week called the WannaKiwi tool. It reconstructs the key used to encrypt your PC. The software in this tool can generate the key and then unlock the encrypted files. There is a big catch with this tool. The infected PC cannot have been rebooted since being infected. So if you have WannaCry and your system has not been rebooted, give the WannaKiwi tool a try. Another resource for getting help with ransomware is nomoreransom.com's CryptoSheriff. It's a collection of resources and ransomware uninstallers from Kaspersky Lab, Intel, and others that can help you identify and begin the process of getting rid of ransomware for free. If you notice a rogue or unknown process on your machine, disconnect it immediately from the internet and other network connections such as Wi-Fi to prevent the infection from spreading. Hopefully these steps I showed you today can help protect you from WannaCry and other ransomware. That concludes this video. All links are in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. Let us know in the comments if you have any helpful tips for preventing ransomware. And if you haven't done so already, click on the subscribe button for more security tips and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.